All right, so this question states, what is considered the normal duration of the PR interval in adults? Okay, so adults, different than children. So that's one thing to note, and duration of the PR interval. So we simply have to know these. These are things you want to keep in mind um, and just kind of retain to your memory. All right, so let's go over the cardiac uh, cycle here. Okay, so this is a normal cardiac cycle. What you have here is our P wave. Okay, notice here, in green this is a nice image here okay this is a q wave that first negative deflection here okay you can see that in that orange color this is an r wave okay that's noted here in red this is an s wave that negative deflection after uh, an r wave or a positive deflection okay and then we have a t wave so those are our waves okay the t wave remember represents ventricular repolarization the qrs complex representing ventricular depolarization okay and the p wave is our atrial depolarization okay so the atria depolarize they repolarize and the ventricles depolarize and then they repolarize okay and then we also have these intervals and segments okay so notice that our pr segment is from the end of our p wave to the start of our qrs complex that's the pr segment okay and then our pr interval includes the p wave so it starts here so this portion is included and it goes to there okay and then we have our qrs interval which you may note is from our beginning of our qrs complex to the end of it okay that's the qrs interval and then we have the st segment that starts here at the j point okay the j point is the end of our QRS complex, the start of the ST segment goes up until the T wave, all right? And then you have the QT interval from the start of our QRS complex all the way to the end of our T wave. That's the QT interval, and that changes uh, based on all females, uh, gender, sex, and so forth. So let's kind of uh, take a look here at the question and go forward. So again, we're looking at the PR interval, okay? So the PR interval, we said, includes the PR segment, okay, as well as the P wave. So just something to keep in mind that you may come across, the PR interval equals the P wave, which is this portion here, Okay, so this is our P wave plus this portion here, which is our PR segment. Okay, so P wave plus PR segment. Okay, so keep that in mind here. All right, so what we have here is something you have to keep in mind. The duration of this portion here is normally between 120 and 200 milliseconds, okay, which is uh, choice B in this case. So that's choice B, or you may hear it as 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds, okay? So both of these equal the same. So either one you may hear, but in this case, we're looking at milliseconds. And I want you to keep this in mind because when we look at AV blocks, the duration of the PR interval can differentiate if we have a first degree AV block or not, okay? Remember, if it's beyond that 200 milliseconds and we're reaching that, then we start talking about AV blocks in adults, okay? So again, adult patients, remember that the normal uh, duration here is between 120 and 200 milliseconds. Now, just to keep things in mind, that is between three and five small boxes, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, if you draw out these small boxes that you'll see on the EKG paper, okay? Each one of those small boxes represents 40 milliseconds, okay? So 40 milliseconds. So you can imagine if you have three of them, Okay, so that means this is 40 as well, and this is 40. That means three small boxes is 120, okay? And then if you add another 80 milliseconds, that gets you up to the 200, okay? So the 200 point. So normal is when our PR interval is between that three and five uh, milliseconds. If you have one that's less than 120, Okay, then you may start thinking about some AV uh, pathways, okay, some accessory pathways that have been going on. If you think about Wolf Parkinson White or WPW syndrome or Longinong Levine syndrome, LGL syndrome, those are more of the short PR intervals where we have these uh, AV accessory pathways, okay. So, again, 
Really important to keep in mind here, this normal PR interval in adults, be able to identify it, is between 120 and 200 milliseconds, or that three to five small boxes, okay? Now, from 70 to 110 milliseconds, this is the normal QRS interval, okay? So from the beginning of our QRS complex, so if you imagine here's our QRS complex, is here from the beginning to the end is the normal QRS interval, okay? And you can see that it starts right as our PR interval ends, okay? So that's important to keep in mind. And when we look at intraventricular conduction delays, that's important because once you hit that 120 milliseconds, then you're thinking prolonged um, intervals, okay? And remember, 120 milliseconds is simply three small boxes, okay? These other two at the end here, are not really relevant, okay, more distractors. So again, what is considered the normal duration of the PR interval in adults? 120 to three or to 200 milliseconds, okay? So 120 to 200 milliseconds or three to five small boxes, okay? Or again, you may hear it as 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. In fact, many of you have asked how you could help us out. Really, the best way you could do is simply subscribe and share this resource with your friends. And you get free access to more than 300 videos. There is also a community of over 270,000 of us like-minded individuals on Facebook. So stop over and join the EKG Guys uh, Facebook community. Many of you have also asked some questions. Leave them below or share them on Facebook, and we can try to answer them with a short video so everyone else can learn. We also have a number of new courses with corresponding videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. Last but certainly not least, your feedback is incredibly helpful and your kind words are always an encouragement on those long days. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you again for your support. It is truly appreciated. We are the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.